Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com, and we are here in North Conwood on Waterloo Road. We're speaking now with Cindy Barber, co-founder of the Beachland Ballroom and Tavern. Cindy, congratulations on 13 years here. Yeah, hopefully it's lucky 13. <laughs> It is Lucky 13. You've been lucky not only for yourself and this place, but this whole neighborhood. Talk about what this place was like when you first decided to move in here. What was this street like? Uh, there were a lot of abandoned buildings. Um, the sausage shops were here, Raydell's and R&D, and they're still here, thankfully. Um, you know, Arts Collinwood is now here, but that was a, sort of an empty, deserted corner bar. There were a few more bars down here. Um, Sometimes it was trouble. It was sort of a, kind of a minefield sometimes to get through uh, the neighborhood. But and I moved over here and dug in and wanted to make it better. So Why this neighborhood? You wanted to start something like this, but why did you end up picking this neighborhood? Well, I moved over here in the 80s when I was... Um, yeah, even before I worked at the Free Times, like in 86, I think, I moved over here. And there were a lot of musicians already over here, a lot of the people from Para Ubu and um, the Pink Holes, and friends of mine were already over here. So uh, I really fell in love with North Collinwood because we're right on the lake. And um, it's, a, it's a very safe neighborhood and, and lots of ethnic fun things to do back then. We were all polka dancing and uh, going to all the little spots and as the people started moving out, as the older ethnic people started um, selling off their businesses, nothing was coming in to fill up the void. So decided to take the big old Croatian social hall and try to figure out what to do with it. You were very involved also in the development corporation here as president of volunteering, getting involved with things, started up Arts Collinwood as well, art gallery and, and co-op space here. How did you find the time to do all this and run and run the Beachland as well? Well, I, I guess I felt like it was a necessity that we needed to help grow the neighborhood, that things weren't just going to happen um, by themselves. So pushing things along um, through service with Arts Collinwood on their board or Northeast Shores felt like it was a necessity to me. Let's uh, take a look inside, if you don't mind, show us around. You've got a ballroom, you've got a tavern. Why don't you lead the way? All right, come on, Tom. So here we are in the tavern. Talk about this space. This is pretty cool. Um, this is our small room. It's 150 capacity, and it's sold out tonight. Um, we have a silent film. Uh, Carousel and Gold Fields are playing tonight. So it, Carousel is an a ex-Clevelander in the band, so there's a lot of family here. And... We're excited. So you're doing basically a show in this room and a show in the big ballroom at the same time. How many nights a week? How many shows a week are you doing? Uh, we do that at probably five nights a week. We're doing double shows. Sometimes early in the week we're just doing the tavern. Like on Monday or Tuesday is only the tavern. Um, this is such a great room, I have to say. Uh, musicians love it. Uh, it's, it packs them in tight here. It's a real rock and roll vibe. you got the bar running along here. It's got just a great feel, and you haven't really done a whole heck of a lot with it, right? You kind of left the original Croatian vibe here. We, we did some. We took out some bar barriers that were up along the middle of the room, and this stage wasn't actually here. This stage, we built this stage when we first opened. I was um, saying that the White Stripes played here on the floor the first week we opened, so we built that, I think, in the first few months. So Jack White was helping you build that stage? Is that what happened? Well, he wasn't actually helping me build it, but he played on the floor. <laughs> Let's follow you into the kitchen and then into the ballroom. Okay, come this way. So what's nice is you have got this kitchen going and you've got a full menu and everything right I mean that's that's been a big deal for you and and brunch on Sunday and uh, we're gonna try to open seven days a week for lunch next that's the one of the things that's on our schedule um, but brunch has been packed lately so it's been hard to get people in and get them a seat so good for you awesome yes let's ha have a look in the ballroom okay this is sound check so uh, this the, the doors aren't open yet, so this is just soundtrack. This is behind the scenes. You're seeing it behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. <laughs> it's okay. So, this, 
looks like it's Megan Morgan McCaskey, a local band, oh, doing their soundtrack. Talk about this beautiful space here. It's an old Croatian dance hall. Right. A lot of tamboritsa music was played in here and polkas and weddings and things like that. All right, we're in the basement now. And it, this is a great shot. It's called This Way Out because why? You got a sign? We uh, were uh, given a sign from the old Euclid Beach, which actually meant, which actually said This Way Out as you were exiting the ride to tell people how to get out. So we called it This Way Out because we have the sign. Because it was cheaper to use the sign that you already had and to get one made. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, plus, well, you know us. We're all about retro and vintage, and it has to be authentic. <laughs> and recycling. So that makes sense. So what are you guys doing here? I, I come here for the vinyl. I know you've got a great selection of vinyl. Yes. We have a lot of different um, uh, pickers, so to speak, um, that uh, put uh, vinyl in here, and they're going out to... to garage sales or um, people's houses and finding old records um, to put in here. And then we have Blue Arrow down the street, so there's really three vinyl stores on this street with music saves. Right. And um, you have a lot of vintage clothing here as well. A lot of vintage clothing. Um, people are trying to find 60s and 70s clothing and then um, put it on the rack and people come down and lots of bands come down here and buy it. You can come right in from the green room and shop here. I was going to say, yeah, there's, this is what ends up happening here a lot of times. You never know who you're going to see in here. And I think they're, they're looking for this kind of, it's, it's kind of rock and roll wear, isn't it? Totally. And it's so much cheaper in the Midwest than it is in New York or the West Coast. So they outfit themselves. And oftentimes fans are, you know, talking from stage, like, I got this downstairs at the store. <laughs> and they're very excited about their new clothing. Talk about some of the bands you mentioned, uh, the White Stripes. Talk about some of the others, the Black Keys we were talking about earlier, came here, what they did, their very first gig here, uh, before they even played together. Well, they had recorded together, but they hadn't actually played out yet, so they played in the Tavern um, stage. Uh, 2002, I think, was their first show, and then they did many shows for us after that. Um, we, they did a two-night sellout in the ballroom. They did a secret show later on in the tavern, came back, um, and sold that out in like a couple of hours. And we promoted them at the Agora, and, you know, they have remained our friends. They gave us a nice shout-out at the queue the last time they were there. <laughs> That's nice. And who else? Because you, you've, you've had so many bands come through, and some are still coming through. They might be giants and really, really pretty major acts, but and some have just gone on to where they're huge, yeah. I mean, we, um, you know, we were able to help promote the Decemberists and grow them. Josh Ritter played one of his first opening slots um, in front of Jimmy Dale Gilmore here and then went on to bigger things. Um, Joe Bonamassa played in the tavern and now is playing, I think, you know, Playhouse Square sometimes. So a, a lot of younger people have, you know, started here and then gone on. Talk about how you have managed to sort of almost out of the blue when you started um, 13 years ago to create what's really now really one of the premier alternative rock clubs in the entire country, if not the world. I mean, how have you really, do you think you were able to do that? Well, I think it's a, it, and we didn't know we were going to be able to do that. I mean, that's completely a fluke. Um, I think that um, Mark, my partner, whose aesthetic is garage rock, and, and he was booking the White Stripes um, at Paths in the Flats even before we started this collectively, um, is very smart about picking really authentic, eclectic music, and my um, leaning towards singer-songwriters and Americana, I think the combination and our hard work, we just wanted to take care of people. You know, we fed them um, real food. They weren't getting pizza, um, so they were really appreciative of that. I mean, when Los Straight Jackets played here, they were so thrilled by the look of the place and the jukebox that had 45 records on it that they went out and told all their friends, you've got to play the Beachland. So it, the word sort of spread, and it was totally by accident. <laughs> so it wasn't planned, but you did a nice job, and we hear this all the time that people come to the Midwest, they get treated nice, they, they get a great audience, they get great promotion, they feel welcome, there's people actually listening to them. And it's not just a scene like you have on the coast or whatever. And then they start to spread the word, and then it becomes a place that people just want to come to. 
Yeah, and I think that we've been pretty careful about our growth because we really want to be a listening room. Um, we really want to be a music room. We don't want people here. Necessarily. We want people here, but we don't want we want people to listen and pay attention to the music. And we've sort of, um, you know, compromised a little bit in um, you know not selling ourselves out to just a a, a bar crowd that doesn't necessarily appreciate music because we want people to be in the room and, and really liking what they're hearing on the stages. Because there are a lot of places that they, they make their money at the bar, the band is sort of secondary, and they're getting whoever and whenever, and it's not about listening. Whereas here, every single night, there's two or sometimes more different acts. People are here to actually listen to that band. Yes, and and sometimes that's to our detriment because we're not, you know, we're not making money hand over fist all the time but um, we have uh, we're appreciated by real music fans and we're appreciated by the musicians where are we going from here um, you, you, you have plans I know for a deck off of uh, the tavern in summer months uh, where else are you what other plans do you have well, increasing the food because we need to increase our cash flow. Um, so we're, we've got a patio plan, and we're going to take out the um, parking spots that are along the wall and do a wraparound jack because there's a street escape coming next summer on Waterloo. Um, so we want to be a part of that. And there's all kind of energy coming because um, Alan Glazen has his Operation Light Switch um, where he's getting other people to come over here and buy property and start restaurants and um, cafes and things like that. So that looks like it's moving forward. And next fall, by the time we get to the other end of the streetscape and some of these places being open, Waterloo is going to look like um, a real hopping place. It'll be an overnight sensation after 13 years here, right? <laughs> exactly. It's been a long time coming. And you've done a lot of hard work. And it's so great to see you. We're, we're here all the time. We're with you. The whole community's with you. We're so proud of what you've done both before here with the Free Times as editor there and the focus on local music. Thank you, Cindy Barber and Mark Letty, for everything you guys do, and uh, congratulations on your 13 years. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate it. <laughs> hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in Cool Cleveland.